Hey everyone, Ginny Dudunsky here, Wormwise. I've just found one of these. It's a long acting drench capsule. It's been chewed up and spat out and actually I don't want to talk about these but what I do want to talk about today is just worms in ewes at lambing time and what makes our ewes more or less susceptible to worm challenges around lambing. So I'm sure you all know that over the the weeks prior to lambing and that early lactation period that our ewes are prone to losing some of their innate immunity to worms and how much that actually impacts the ewe and her production and the economic um, outcomes of that are dependent on a range of factors on your farm. So the first and probably biggest one um, is the food on offer to those ewes at lambing and in the immediate weeks pre-lamb. Um, it's true, it, it is measurable that we can get very big production responses uh, from ewes given long acting drench products when they're underfed in that period. Um, but happily the converse is also true, um, that when we really nail the feeding of those ewes, um, get the, the grass right at set stocking, um, be lambing at the time where um, that feed is just coming up under them um, and they're being as well fed as they can. Uh, over lambing um, that the need for those long acting products drops right off um, so that's a big opportunity. Another area of opportunity on many farms is the body condition on your ewes. Um, we know that all ewes will respond to some degree to having worms removed um, on a long acting basis from them over the lambing period. Um, but those ewes that are body condition score three, three and a half, um, they're much better able to buffer that challenge and it's much, much less likely that you're going to get an economic response um, from treating those animals. So there's lots of good reasons for maximising the number of those animals in your flock at lambing and feeding them really well as well. Uh, another farm factor is the level of worm contamination that's been carried over into the spring and, and late winter that's going to be challenging those ewes. Um, if they're under real stress having to fight off um, thousands and thousands of worm larvae that they're ingesting um, every, every bite they take um, because that area that they're grazing has, has carried a heap of lambs all through the autumn and into the winter, um, that's going to make it harder for those ewes to resist uh, that worm challenge and perform well. Um, so while none of these outcomes are things that you can probably change now, um, they're definitely the things that you want to take into account when you're thinking about worm management in your ewes at lambing time and maybe something to start casting your mind forward to next season as to how you might hit some of those targets. So great feeding of ewes, having them in optimal body condition and trying to reduce some of that worm challenge on pasture um, by not pinching from the ewes in the autumn and laying down a whole lot of worm contamination with lambs still there. So thanks for listening now. I'll catch you again soon. Probably haven't finished everything I've got to say about use at pre-lamb time, but that was a start.